We did the angular unspoken and unwritten rules, but what about the co-anglers? That's what we're going to talk about right now. If you like this kind of content, click that like and subscribe button. Thank you for all the new subscribers, all the new members, all the people who comment, all the people who are interactive on the channel all the time. I so appreciate you and respect your comments and thank you. But if you're not one of those people, I don't know what the hell you're doing. Click that button. It's free and become part of the team and family. Now, I haven't ranked these in any type of order, but I've written down 10 co-angler, unwritten, unspoken rules that I think all people should abide by, even if you're on a boat with a friend. You're still a co-angler. But these are more or less for anglers that are a co-angler on in a pro fishing tournament. And you have this opportunity to go, or you paid this opportunity to go with someone as a co-angler, you need to just make sure right off the bat that you're very respectful and that these things that I'm going to speak about, you don't do. And some of them make just common sense. And some of them might be slightly different variations than the other one. And these are rules that all co-anglers should know, put in their head, and abide by. So again, these are not in any type of order. But first, don't throw or cast in front of the boat. It makes sense. You're on someone else's boat. They are actually probably paying more to be in that tournament. And you should not have your, your line in front of their line. They technically get first option of all water in all areas. And you're in back for a reason. You don't own the boat. Be appreciative of it. That angler in front hopefully will take care of you at some point in time. Maybe not. Especially if he's forward-facing sonar. But don't put your, don't put your bait in front of the boat. Next, don't bring a GPS. Do not go out there with something that can mark coordinates. I can tell you this as a, as a, someone who used to saltwater fish, my buddy had a saltwater charter business. He took someone out fishing and that person had a GPS of the exact spot they were out there going fishing and it pissed him off. Now, what can you do about it? Really nothing. But as a co-angler, you shouldn't have a GPS on the on on yourself at any point in time. Don't bring every rod and every lure that you own. You might have 60 rods in your garage. It doesn't mean 60 rods need to come with you. You don't need to have two or three backpacks of, of tackle to bring with you either. Know that you're in limited space. So don't bring everything you own. This one's a, a killer for me. I, I really dislike going fishing when they someone brings everything that they own with them. So bring the stuff you know you're going to use, and that's it. Fourth, you might know a good spot because you've fished that pond or lake quite a few times. But that doesn't mean the pro wants to know. Know your spot in that case. Communicate with him beforehand or during the during the tournament but when it's slow don't instantly go oh I know a spot over here to go to the angler probably knows in a majority of the cases more than the co-angler and you're the co-angler remember it's their boat you get to go where they are it's like getting in a car and and you're in the passenger seat and changing the music no no don't even do it don't even do it that is not your spot that is not your car but don't tell the angler where you think you both should be fishing. Fifth, be on time and be prepared. This is one of the things I'm, I love. I don't like being late for anything, but be on time, be prepared, and be ready to leave at the exact time they're leaving. Next, don't be a chatty Cathy. Keep the talking to a minimum. When the time occurs or when the time happens that the conversations can happen, they will happen. But you don't need to go out there and be extremely loud and talkative. Next, offer the angler some gas money. Throw him 20 bucks, throw him 30 bucks. Do him a favor, even though he might have had the best day ever. It doesn't mean he's gonna make a check. And he put several hundred dollars of gas in that boat to take you fishing. So offer him a couple bucks. 20, 30 dollars isn't bad. And if you can afford to be a co-angler, you can afford 30 dollars to help the angler with gas. Next, keep your snags to a minimum. If you're not casting well or don't cast well, don't cast into that brush where the angler has to move over and unsnag your, your bait for you every time. If that's the case, break it off. 
and just suck it up. But don't continuously get snag after snag after snag where you're making the, the boater have to adjust his fishing. I'm going to flip the second and the first one around because I think this will make better sense. But you go fishing with one angler on one day and another angler on the second day. Doesn't mean you need to share your spots that you went with on the first day. That was that angler spot. Where you go in the second day is that angler spot too. But don't share your spots from the day before. That is a definite no-no. And last but not least, and why I switch this, is respect the boater. Respect your boater. Think about that. Don't, don't give him a hard time. Don't tell him he's wrong. You're on his boat again. So respect him. Luckily, you're on that boat so you can learn as much as possible. So do the, do the work. Watch what he's doing. Learn from where he's going. Learn how he's fishing, his techniques, his cadence, all of that. You are very fortunate to have this opportunity, so take advantage of it. But don't do any of those things I just told you about. Hope you like this video. Thanks for hitting that like and subscribe button. If you have others that I should have mentioned, put them in the comments below. Remember, take a kid fishing, get your fish on. I'll talk to you soon. Cheers and thank you.